Good evening to each and every one of you. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and Romans uh, chapter 12. Hebrews 11 and Romans chapter 12. Hebrews 11, the Bible says, God having provided some better things for us. God having provided some better things for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Look at your neighbor and say, God got better for you. And tell them, I'm going to get my better. Yes, I'm determined to get my better. Uh, Romans chapter 12, the book of Romans chapter 12. Uh, Romans 12, starting at verse 1. Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God. Look at your neighbor and say, we got something to prove. Amen. We got something to prove. You may be seated. Uh, I want to talk very briefly tonight. We're going to uh, flip the strip just a little and uh, give to you what the Lord gave to me. It's going to uh, put all of us in a school uh, mindset and uh, we're going to grade our own papers tonight. The Lord told me we want to talk about a spiritual examination. A spiritual examination. Look at your, look at your neighbor and say, I done took the test. I'm the teacher and the student. And I'm going to grade my paper with truth. Amen. That word examination in the Webster is an exercise designed to examine progress or test qualification or knowledge. Uh, examine means it's a formal interrogation. It, is, it means to inspect closely, to inspect closely. So, fam, as I begin to seek God concerning tonight's service, I heard the Spirit of God say, ask my people, when was the last time they had a spiritual checkup? When was the last time they had a spiritual checkup? Watch this. According to my word not according to their knowledge, not according to what other folks think their life should be, but according to my word. When was the last time we had a spiritual checkup? Then he began to say the first thing he said was to remind you of how important the word is. How important the word. Look at your neighbor say, we can't judge our life by what we want. Our life has already been predestined by what God already commanded. Amen. And look at that saying, neighbor. So we got to get our life back on track. Yeah, we got to, we've been misled in so many areas by so many emotions, so many uh, feelings, so many desires. We have, our life has been misled. Amen. There are people that know that a part of this church life's been so misled, they thought something was more important to come in the Bible study. So we've been hoodwinking, bamboozled as believers, and everything is more important than God. But tell somebody tonight, we teacher and student. Amen. Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, uh, the word is the most important thing, he said. The book of Deuteronomy, if you're with me, just turn there. Deuteronomy, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter, let's look at chapter 8. We won't be long tonight. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's look at verse 1. You know the story of this whole chapter. And all the commandments which I command thee, watch this, this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear to your fathers. Watch this verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. To humble thee, 
to humble thee. Watch this. And to prove thee. To know what was in thy heart. Whether thou was kept. Whether thou would have keep his commandments or no. Now watch verse 3. And he humbled thee. And suffered thee to hunger. To feed thee with manna. Which thou knoweth not, knoweth not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee, watch this, that he might make thee to know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Now watch this. He says that, uh, watch this. He says, and he humbled thee. He's talking about the children of Israel in their disobedience. He humbled thee and suffered thee to what? To hunger. So he humbled them by making them hungry. And fed them with manna. Which thou knoweth not. Neither did they their fathers know that he might what? Make thee. Look at God. He, he humbled thee and he gonna make you. That he might make thee know that man what? By bread alone. So in other words, God was orchestrating everything here. To get the children of Israel back on track. And ultimately, ultimately, excuse me, to let you know, listen, you don't live by bread alone, but by every word that what proceedeth out of the mouth of who? Of the Lord, not God. I'm going to show you by all the mouth of God later in the New Testament. But here he says, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord, the Man, eat. Did y'all Bible say the same thing? Y'all look at me strange when I said that. Okay, it said Lord, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure that mine wasn't misprint. See, see, the children of Israel was disobedient, right? And God had to tell them, "You got everything. You must live your life by everything that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. You can't do what you want to do." You can't eat what you want to eat. You got to obey everything that comes out of the Lord's mouth. If you want to live in verse 1. He says that you may live and multiply. But you can't live and multiply if you don't do everything that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. If you become grown in yourself and want to do your own thing, you're going to be led by me. Because watch this, I refuse to lose you. I, I don't want to say too much tonight, but uh, uh, um, we, we, we got to be careful. Can, can I just share something with you? And y'all don't get scary and, 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 and bound. And, do, do, can, can you believe that God can't stand the devil, but he used the devil? I ain't going to go too far. He utilized the enemy to get our attention. They have no communication. But what he does is, like he did to Job, he steps back a little. He know the enemy's M.O. It's not like he said, devil, get him. But he knows the enemy M.O. because he understands the enemy hates his people. So he steps back a little. And when he see it getting a little hot, he sent his grace and his mercy. But it's an awakening for us. Because if the truth be told, the very things we go through causes us to turn to God. To call on God. Am I right about it? It gets our attention. And it gets us to the point where we become, we get in a fighting stance. Where we're ready to fight with the weapons of our warfare. Y'all ain't with me tonight. 
See, when you look at situations, trials and tribulations, situations in this manner, you won't become defeated in talking about what was me. You begin to understand there's an enemy against me, and I got to make, I already got the victory because I got a God that's on my side, but I got to fight to get where I'm supposed to be. Because one says, I got myself here. I got myself here. Or God is trying to prove something through me. So in other words, in spite of which, which direction I'm in, I've already, I got God on my side, so I'm already going to win-win situation. So you can't lose. You can't lose. God don't tempt his people. He already knows you got the victory. But God would do whatever he got to do to awaken his people. So, did we finish reading this? He says, uh, verse uh, 3. And he what? Humber thee and suffer thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not, neither did they, thy fathers know that he might make thee know, the, know that man does not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceedeth out of does man what? Live. So he's saying here, listen, if you're going to live, you got to live by my word. You know, the, you know the children of Israel, how they was begging for this, begging for that. Disobedient, disobedient in that. God gave them enough man to run out their ears. But they didn't want that. You know how we are. Yeah. All right. I won't stay on that too long. But watch this. So here he says, man shall live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of what? The mouth of the Lord. Let's look at Jesus. Out of the mouth of the Lord. Turn to Matthew. Look at Jesus. Matthew 4. We're going to be out of here. Matthew 4. But we, in exam we, we, we have examined ourselves, right? Because my thing is, I, and God began to even deal with me, is, is son, are, are you ripe and ready for all that you ask and all that I desire? Uh, look at Matthew 4. Watch this. Watch Matthew 4. And, and, and because we've got to be very careful because we can easily be misled by the things of our eyes, desires of our hearts, the way the trend is going. We can easily be misled and make wrong right. Do y'all hear me? I say it's very easy to be seduced where you think and you're doing the right thing. But if you think back over your life last five years, you will look at it as it was wrong. But because of society and because of the life that, that this world is producing and because of the seduction of our eyes and ears, we think everything is right. When we look at our life 10 years ago, we would have knew that was wrong. We would have cursed it by the, in the name of Jesus. But now it's okay. All right. okay. okay. Jesus, Matthew chapter 4, look at verse 4. Let's start with, with 1. Then when Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the temper came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of, son of God, command thee that these stones be made what? Bread. Bread. Now, back in Deuteronomy, he says, Man shall not live by what? Bread alone. Bread alone. So here come the devil again. Telling Jesus, If you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. Now, in the Old Testament, the, God says, you got to listen to everything that proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. Yeah. Now, here come the devil on top trying to tempt the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. For him to do a miraculous move because of he's seen what he's been do, going through, that's fasting. Turn this stones into bread because I know you're hungry. But you are the Lord. God just told us in Deuteronomy that we got to live by what comes out of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are today. Hearing what Jesus told the enemy. 
the enemy put bread before him, Jesus said, watch this, it is written. God told us we can do the wrong. If they come out of the mouth of the Lord. So if then something already had to have been said. Right. Jesus said it's written before it was written. It is written, man should not live what? The same thing was said in Deuteronomy. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. See how they won? He ain't going to take no glory in his earthly form. Because he says over and over, I do nothing except my father tells me. God, because him and Jesus is one, said in Deuteronomy, everything I proceed out of my son's mouth you listen to. Jesus flipped it around and said, everything proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's what we do. All right. So Jesus dealing with temptation, the children of Israel dealing with disobedience. So whenever we are disobedient, we still got to buy the, buy the word. Whenever we are tempted, we still got to buy by the word. That's all I want to get to you. How important this word is. We, we know this. I'm just dealing with something now. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word what? what? Was. The word was the Lord. And the word was with God. So everything is, is circled around the word. Look at somebody and say, without the word, you are uncontrollable. Without the word, you'll create your own Bible. The word is our boundary. It keeps us on check, in check. What you can't do, what you cannot do. Without the word, your flesh will come in at ease and begin to uh, resolve around whatever's going on. And you will find scripture and you will find everything within yourself to say I'm alright. I'm alright. At least I ain't what I used to be. You'll find yourself able to subject to things that you never would have subjected. Am I right? Am I anybody in the building besides me? You'll find yourself oh, this okay got this under control. It's all right. I'll stop tomorrow. All right. So he said in the beginning was what? And the word was. was and in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. So everything he did, he did it based on the word. Then he said and the word was Look at somebody said, that's the way I'm trying to be. I'm trying to have this word with me and become the word. Amen. Say this, say a spiritual examination. That's what I need. I'm looking at myself. I'm not looking at nobody. I don't care who's here, who's not here. I don't care what you know about me. Right through here, I'm teacher and student. I'm checking the papers. As, as this scripture is laid out to me, I'm making sure I'm checking on saying yes or checking on saying no. I'm not fooling myself saying what I'm not. If I'm in disobedience to any scripture, I'm saying, God, X that. That's not me. I'm not living up to that standard. Now help me. Yes, I got that together. I did that last week. I'm all right with that. But to keep me moving forward. First Peter 5 says uh, that we, we got to humble ourselves. And this is what God began to share with me, Pops. God say, son, this thing is on you. In other words, you say you man, right? Or y'all say y'all woman, whatever you are. You say you grown. You say you know me. You receive me as your Lord and Savior. It's on you. So he took me to Peter. First Peter 5 says, humble thyself. Not the Lord humble you. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. So, so you, you don't, don't, don't go around. And, and this is what happens in churches and across the board. The average believer waiting for the church to do what they're able to do. And if they don't hear the very word they want to hear, 
They blame the pastor. They blame everybody. But not, they forget about they came to the altar and got before God and said, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. Now you have a personal relationship with God just like everybody else. No matter what title a person is, a believer is a believer in the sight of God. Titles is for the earth. God used titles for his order of, of service, but it don't put a title person higher in the sight of God than anybody else. It just gave them more responsibility. So you can't look at a pastor and say a pastor no more than me. No, the devil is a liar. You got the word. The word is written in the pages for everybody to read. And it's according to your faith. It's according to your, your spirituality. It's according to your desire. It's how much you want of God. You can be on the pew and be more anointed than somebody with a robe on. It's according to how much you want. And how much you yield is not according to what you do. Because we got people that don't even serve God doing for God. We got unsaved people doing, working in the kingdom. Y'all don't believe that? What did I say, First Peter? Look at First Peter. So we got, we got to do some work on ourselves. Amen. And it's amazing because people know this. Yeah, they... they they know we got, we got to work on ourselves, but and so when somebody tell them something, they get an attitude. Yeah. Telling me what to do, but then you want, then you want you work on yourself then. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Glory to God. First Peter. Did I say first Peter? Yeah. Look at first Peter chapter five. Watch this. First Peter five. First Peter five and six. What's the first word? Humble. Okay, that's it. I can start right now. Humble yourself. If we got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost should unction us, touch us, get on us every day, all day. We don't need no CIAs or FBIs. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, knows right and wrong. He knows our purpose and our destiny. He knows when we cuss under our breath. He knows when we lie. He knows. See, we don't know this. We don't know. We don't know. You could be cussing. You could be knowing another language and say, I don't know what you said. But the Holy Ghost knows. The Holy Ghost knows the intention of our hearts. Whether we act or not. So, listen to him say, why don't you just listen to the Holy Ghost and stop letting your life be ran by humans. Stop trying to please humans and please the Father. When you please the Father, you have peace and you will be more successful. You will live. Look at somebody and say, stop pleasing people. Stop trying to be perfect for people. Stop trying to be right for people. You know the average person is in bondage because they're trying so hard to hold back themselves. Maybe sometimes you let yourself go so the Holy Ghost can check you and so you can see how fool and nasty you really are. Be be He says, humble yourselves. Therefore, how? Under the mighty hand of pastor. Don't try to please me. Don't try to look good in front of me. I ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. I'm trying to make heaven myself. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may what? In, in other words, in his time. That, because it ain't nothing going to come do until he ready. That he may exalt you. So you ain't got to be in the forefront saying yes to me 30,000 times to get a promotion. There is no good side, no bad side of me with God's people. Everybody's on the good side. 
But we got to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt thee in his timing. Watch this. We're talking about examination, right? Examine ourselves. So we got to humble ourselves to God, right? Then he says, this is what we got to do. Casting all your upon for he care. In, exam in my examination, I got to know that God cares for me. So I, I, say I, you ain't, you ain't Lucifer, you can say I on this one. Say I got to take everything I'm dealing with and give it to God. This work I got to do. I got to give it to him. He says, be what? Sober. Be vigilant. Because what? The devil is what? Walking about seeking. Now, we got to be humble unto God. Because the enemy is waiting. Waiting right now. Behind that wall is two doors. The devil himself got an ear to the glass and trying to come in. The angels of God with the, and with the sword of the spirit is warring against every enemy that's trying to get in here. And the angels and Jesus is reminding God of this sanctuary and reminding God that upon, up, uh, up, upon the post of this door is blood. Y'all with me? And the blood is speaking on our behalf. That's why we don't understand how serious and important it is to come into a sanctuary. There's warfare going on all around us and the inner and Jesus and angels are fighting. The word is speaking on our behalf while God is talking to his people. So we get the information from God and go out there where that joker is and with ammunition continue to fight the battle. That's, I don't know why I'm getting here, but that's why we go through the process because sometimes imps be on our shoulder when we walk in the sanctuary. Yeah, imps be on us. They've been dealing with us all day long. Imps and demons be on us. So that's why the, pro, the, the purpose of praise. You understand what I'm saying? To make sure that everything that's out there stays out there. So they try to come in with us, get out of here. Because they understand this is not an atmosphere for them to even be in. They shouldn't be able to, uh, imp, a demon shouldn't be able to stay within a, a believer in the sanctuary. Y'all ain't with me tonight. So if an imp and a demon can stay within a believer in the sanctuary, that believer didn't do what they're supposed to do. Now they are part of the devil's force trying to interrupt the sanctuary of God. They talking while the word is going on. They sleep while the word is going on. They chewing gum while the word is going on. They text it. Those are demons. They text it while the word is going on. They Distracting demons. They cussing and fussing and fighting. Throwing angry faces by the word. But a believer shouldn't come in the sanctuary with demons and imps. So we have those things because of our daily, daily life. We come in to praise. And we go through the channels to get rid of the demons and the imps that have been harassing our life all day long. Hello. So all through the day when we are not in sanctuary atmosphere, we deal with demonic attacks. We, are y'all with me tonight? We deal with demonic people. Y'all deal with demonic people in your jobs, at the mall, walking the streets. Do, have y'all ever seen demons on people? Yes, I have plenty of time. All day long, every day. So we deal with all that stuff. But we come up in here. We're in a safe zone. But we got to make sure that we bring in safety in the safe zone. That we, that we didn't go through customs. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Go through customs. The angels of God as we enter to the sanctuary. That we didn't go through customs tainted. Now 
fact, when I went to the airport last time we went to Atlanta, uh, they, it got me. And they said, when they put, they put the little thing around me, and they said, come over here. I said, what's going on? They took my son the same way. Me and Des, they took Des all the way in the back. I said, oh, Jesus, not again. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they, they took me, and they took this little thing, and hold your hand out, and they swiped my hand. I said, what's going on? They said, you got uh, powder, I mean, uh, explosive powder on your hand. Residue of explosion. I said, what? And I said, well, what my son got on his head? I'll take him back in the room. They said, he got the same thing. So they took him back there and stripped him down. But they swiped my hand. They said, oh, you're all right. I said, well, wait a minute. Residue of explosion on my hand. I ain't had no gun. They said, it's come. I forgot where she is. Some lotions have. I forgot what they said it was that was in it. Some lotions, all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, okay, I'm all right. So that doesn't finally came. I said, what happened? They said, Daddy struck me down. Tell me. <laughs> he said, I thought I was in Jamaica. They, 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 they struck me down. <laughs> and and Tom asked me all this and had the baby. Uh, he had, I had, he had the baby. So I had to take the baby. Took the baby stuff. Bag all that stuff back in there, went through the bottles and everything. I had the baby. I said, Little Jeremiah, we, little DJ, we getting out of here. But uh, I was telling him that Yo, they got your daddy back there. But anyway, but residue, re residue, what I'm saying is the same thing in the spirit realm. That's the purpose of praise, the purpose of worship. We got to get stuff off of us. Amen. The enemy knew you was coming to church. And he did as much as he could do today to make sure you frustrated and see who he can, what kind of spirit he can get in you so you, so he can have access to get in the sanctuary. And some believers, not in this church, in other churches, not even in this state, in other states, bring the enemy in when he shouldn't even have the code to get in. They slip him in. And if the order of service don't sit as an enemy in the building, he stays in the worship. That's how fights break out in church. People cussing in church. People want to do all this in church. The enemy came in some kind of way. Because this is a sanctuary. Am I right about it? This is a sanctuary that should be holy unto God. And if a believer should be representative of the sanctuary. So if you ever in the, a sanctuary that is holy unto God and you do an unholy activity, you just let a devil in. So now when it should, if people come in here, say 90 people come in here, genuine, holy, and ready to hear from God, they got 10% of the enemies in here still trying to mess with them, mess with their atmosphere. Now we fight to try to get the atmosphere right so God, because God ain't come where no devil is. He ain't coming. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He don't come. I don't care. We have 90% holy over here and 2% over here. The 90 should take authority over the 2 so the Holy Spirit can come in and heal everybody. That's, you don't, that's talking about uh, being the doorkeepers of the house of God. That's very important. Being hosts and hosts and, and security. It's just not a net. It's a spiritual thing. Amen. Leaders. Oh no, God got here. I should say this for certain. Leaders, when they come into the sanctuary, they should be they should be mature enough to have the discernment of the spirit to discern spirits and make. Because what also what we, what do we want? We want the word of God to come forth freely, but the word of God cannot come forth freely when spirits are around. So everybody from the from the from the doorkeeper to security to the leaders and to the saints got to get rid of spirits. I still something on you? Yeah. First, you got to get rid of the spirit that's in you before you can start doing warfare in the sanctuary. You got to make sure there's no evil spirit, no, no conniving, no jealous spirit in you. You, you, you got to make sure that you clean of the unclean spirit. Now you can be a watchman of the doorhouse of God. You can walk through the sanctuary and take a thought of every spirit because everybody needs to be ready for to hear the word of God. You just don't come in the church, pop your black butt, oh, excuse me, pop your butt down and get ready for the word. You got to do warfare. 
Because the weaker links, those that need more deliverance and healing than you, got to get it. But they can't get it when demons and imps all around. So in other words, so we come up here on time. Yes, sir. We come and do battle. Yes, sir. That's the purpose of we, we, we put into place in accessory prayer before service. Yes, sir. Getting in spiritual warfare, spiritual battle. See, see, this, this it, it's just not, we just take things for granted. We don't understand spirits. We just take things for granted. I'm coming to church. For what? Come on, church. Come on. We all need something from God. So we first got to work on ourselves, make sure that we are straight, ready to receive. And then when we get in, we be used as a vessel of God to make sure the atmosphere, we put everything on the praise and worship team. You, they got to sing spirits out. That was supposed to do, right? <laughs> sing spirits out. But you sitting there with a known spirit. We want them unruly spirits knowing you full of demons and imps and you want them to sing oh they ain't singing nothing they done miss every tune look at you you spirit look at you evil spirit work on yourself because you're you contaminating the atmosphere and that and, and until we get back to where we used to be as a body of Christ when I first came into the fullness of God I mean before people before church started we prayed over the sanctuary. People came in the door. My God, when I was in Alabama, the church I was in, people came in the door. People had to, I'm not talking about embarrassing or, or immature people. I'm talking about mature believers that had the sermon of the spirit. And they see someone come in that door, they go to that person. And they begin to pray. And I'm not interrupting the service. I'm talking about before service starts. And begin to pray. And while they in service, if a spirit come in, they sit and they praying for them. You ain't got to look at them, you ain't got to touch them. But I'm praying that spirit off of them. Y'all don't like that kind of church, do you? Oh, yeah. Even when I got here. Same thing when I got here at Brother Life. Well, you can discern people coming with the wrong spirit. You don't have to go to them and lay hands on them and knock them down and throw them over the floor. No, you begin, you look at so that spirit right there in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit. Yeah, God begin to show you this spirit. You've been calling out stuff. Because you don't want that spirit. To, you don't want that spirit to know I know who you are. I see what you came to do. But you're not going to achieve what you came to do. You're going to get up out of here. I don't know how I got on that, but that ain't what I'm, I'm talking about. So examine. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Examine yourself. He said, because your adversary, the devil, is like a what? Roaring like walking about, seeking whom he what? Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brother that are what? In the world. All right. Glory to God. Let's, let's look at this. I'm going to show you this. Right. Oh, no. How am I doing this, Lord? I need more time with the Lord. T turn to 2 Timothy. I want to I just walk through this just a little bit. Yes, and we're going to get out of here. God want to use us. Yes, sir. He, he want to use us. I mean, he want to use us. We got to make sure that we are ready to be used of God. We, and look at your neighbor and say, you cannot wait for somebody else. You got to do it yourself. Let me say this. Everybody want to play that babe role. But they don't know what to do. Eighty percent of the people in this church is full of word, but you know the sad part about it? They don't want to use what they know. They don't want to use what they know. They rather get help from a backup from natural people. God want to use you all for His glory. 
We want to create our own glory. Yeah. Yeah. We won't do everything on the sun, but let God use us. Mm. People are just content by singing on the praise team for 13 years. Mm. Are you serious? That ain't hit my call. Some of you, you were a help for a certain period of time. But because you did not want to move to the next level, you became comfortable. Now you done got your own mic. It's yellow. And you have been content with that. And now you're trying to figure out why you get so frustrated in so many rehearsals. Because you be past your rehearsal time. Because you refuse to obey and get committed and move to the next level of your life. Think you're doing so for God because you're singing every Sunday. And God is saying, I had that. Oh, that was over 2008. Man, you trying to figure out why you run out door every time rehearsal come? Were you mad every time rehearsal night? You can't understand why they don't get with you. They, they can't do this. They can, you tired of this? You tired of that? Because you're in the wrong place, maybe. You refuse to submit yourself to this ministry 100% and be so that that your man of God can be comfortable enough through the spirit of God to move you to your next level. Can I tell y'all something? I would not move anybody that's not committed. And not committed is not being in the church every Sunday. Committed is your heart. And I look right through your heart. I don't care how many times you come on Sunday. How many times you come on Wednesday. That means nothing to me. That means nothing to God. You can be sitting here with demons all over you. And, mis- and disrupting the sanctuary. But when you, the, the, your, your lifestyle, the things you do to help this ministry, the things you do to break down this ministry, the things you say about this ministry, when you don't think nobody hearing you. It's, it's Pastor Paul left here five years ago. Can I slip something on you? Pastor Paul should have been the first person left out of here. Should have been. But we got so many clicks, so many emotional problems, so many lust problems that you, God can't put you where you're supposed to be because you're still dealing with yourself. And fear. All right. I don't know where that came from. It came from the throne room. Let's get back on. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine. Uh, we say First Peter, Second Peter, Second Timothy. Maybe I need to read Peter. Okay. Well, look at Second Timothy chapter three. What time is it? Jesus of Nazareth. We gonna get through all this. Second Timothy chapter three. This is what God gave me today. I'm reading out of the NIV. But know this: that in the last days, perilous times will come. In what? The last days, perilous times will come. We are in scripture. Watch this. For men will be lovers of themselves. Now, we're going to do this whole chapter one day. I ain't going to do it today because uh, we'll be here until about 1030. But we're going to go through this whole chapter. Sh- God's put this on me today, Pops. And, and he says, so examine you. Do you fit in any one of these things in this chapter? And then he told me, and I said, Lord, you know what you got to do? You got to show me. This is my bad, This is my biggest point here. You got to show me how to be a believer in these perilous times. I cannot use my first time into Christianity and deal with things how I deal with things going on now. Some things just supposed to be. Uh Uh-oh, let me help somebody. Sadie, some things is supposed to be because we are in the last days. Now, maybe 25 years ago, we might, Rosie, could have prayed for those things or prayed against those things. And that's what I'm asking God in my life. I don't want to be sitting up tumble before heaven and and things just supposed to be. I'm asking God for directions. Tell me what to pray for. 
You can't just pray for everything. We used to, we, we used to can use our compassionate heart, and God honored that. But we are in the last days of this world, and something just go be. So, prophetess, I do not want to pray for things that's supposed to be. That's where I'm at. I'm asking God, show me what to pray for. I don't want to pr- watch this because what I've been told was wrong or bad, praying for it. If it's supposed to be. All right. The Bible says, for men will be what? Lovers, Lovers of Watch this. Lovers of? Say it. Y'all scared to say it? Not get past own self. Lovers of? Money. money. Oh, I, I forgot the NIV. Y'all Bible look different from mine. Yeah. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> lovers, my Bible says, lovers of their own selves, lovers of money. Let's talk. Pay the meat on. Everybody pay the meat on this one. Lovers of money. Now we hoodwink it. We fool ourselves and say, I want the money for the kingdom. But God says, those that are faithful over. But everybody wants the big things to be to become faithful. God is watching the two, the ten thousand dollars you make a year. Everybody won't make the six figures. He's watching what you're going to do with the 10,000. You feel what I'm saying? So now we use that. That's our, that's our, our cop out. Yeah, I'm not trying to get that money for the kingdom. But you can't do with what you didn't have for the kingdom. So lovers of What is our problem? Money. Money. Money is our problem. And all of us say, if I had the money, it'd be all right. That's why we ain't got the money. You think the money going to make you happy. You got trillionaires blowing their brains out. God wants you to be content in who you are outside of things. He wants you to love you if you was broke. That's the enemy got us like that. The enemy got us that way. Got us that way. We doing everything for money. Listen, I, listen. There's a place for it. There's a place. Believe me, it's in the earth for a reason. But what I'm saying is, you got to be balanced. You can't let that be your all, all your life. Amen. Amen. If you don't have it, you down. Yes. Amen. When you got it, you happy. Amen. No. You are, that money is controlling you. Yes. And the devil will always have you like this. You got to stay happy. When, when, I, when I don't have it, I shout the hardest. Yes. I laugh the most. Yes. Amen. Look at y'all. As a believer, if that's how your life is, you will never have all that you want. Because God can't trust you. you. He's a jealous God. You are, he already know. You know what? That joke will get money. He's going he to be happy. So I hear people say this all the time. Because I get that means, oh, I just send the tithe. And I'll be in Bahamas somewhere. See? You'll never get it. For sake that son of son of self with the say. You think that the church just need money? The church needs you. I buy the building. No, it ain't about that. It's about you working out your soul salvation. So if you think money makes you, you got a problem already. Lovers of money. We got to meet our needs and take money to do things, but I'm saying keep it in perspective. Keep God first. All right, I can't get through this tonight. Lovers of money, bolsterous. Proud. The Bible says, in the last days, this is what going to be. Y'all see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you see yourself yet? I'll keep reading. Yes. <laughs> Blast, 
parents. Disobedient to parents. That's what's happening in the last days. Unthankful. Unholy. Unloving. You might can't even love you. You're so hateful and bitter and nasty and mean. Nobody can't even love you. That's a sin. You don't know, Pastor. I've been hurt. Get over it. Let them go. Let it go. Look at this mask. You got to be love. The Bible says God is love. He used images and likeness. God had breakups too. People love him, divorce him. He still love. Uh oh, I got somebody right there. He still for every watch this. God been hurt before. Adam hurt him. Broke his heart. Left him. And from Adam on down. All through the B I B L E. Left him. Even the jokers is not in the B I B L E like us. Right. Left him. We don't left him time to time. We divorced him. We cheated on him. Yes, we did. But guess what? He still loves us. He still forgives us. And watch this. And he, he and watch this. You know how I heard some people say, you know, I got enough people in my life. That's it. God still, with people still dissing him, leaving him, cheating on him, denying him, he's still bringing people to the world of love. Yeah. Every day somebody having a baby yeah. that's supposed to love him. Yeah. So he didn't let his last breakup break his heart forever. Amen. Why should you? Yeah. Unlovable! <laughs> the Bible said last days, Right? Unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather, oh, my Lord, I'm going to stop right there. What the King James say? Say about me, Sister Joanne. I love having a good time, but you know what? I'm disciplined, and I give God the praise for that. Ain't nothing there I created. I'm disciplined. I just know that I can't have no good time on no Sunday morning. Pops, I can't have no good time on no Wednesday night at seven thirty. There's some other days, and then sometimes he steals those days. But I'm disciplined to give him to him. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Just love to have a good time. Don't care about God. Hallelujah. We got to get that thing together. We got to work on our lives. Because the Bible said this is what happened in the last days. You don't want to make sure that you, you're the part of the last evil days. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of God. I'm going to stop right there because that need to be our checkup. This whole chapter, we're going to go through it. But he says, in these last days, there are going to be people that love pleasure more than they love God. Amen? You need to ask yourself, in these first six verses, do I fall under any one of these things? Do I? Four, no, four verses. Do I fall under them? And if I do, I don't allow myself to align myself in these last perilous times. And 
I got to get myself back together because you keep reading down uh, around verse 14, uh, no, 13, 12, and then you'll see what, how things are supposed to change around. But you got to look at your life, examine yourself to make sure that you have not fall short and living in these perilous times that, that, that uh, the Bible talks about. Because it can easily happen. Easy happen to all of us. Yeah. With the things that we you know is not right, we made them right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ain't no perfect people. No perfect people. One thing I don't want to do, I don't want to be living my life thinking I'm okay when I'm not. Right. Mm. I don't. I, I don't want to. Because I'm telling you, I've seen it. I look, I look at my, I don't look at nobody else, but I look at my life. I've seen how I got lackadaisical in certain areas. And the things years ago, I hated those things. But I got lackadaisical, and I'm like, oh, it's all right. But it was not the Bible change. It's something happened to me. Amen. And God told me, God said, you have to be very careful that we in these last days, that things change in this world that you don't just accept everything. You don't be nasty. You be godly. But you cannot just accept everything on the umbrella of I'm just being I'm just being nice and I know what the word said. No, you 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 got to have a standard. I don't care what it is, what laws they pass. I don't care what, how this world go. You got to always have that standard for God. And God will show you how to maneuver in the world be, with love and standard. And I'm afraid a lot of believers trying to fit in, say, I'm, I'm, brother, I'm a Christian and God is love and God love everybody and, and, and we just just melting in with the standards of the world. No. I got to be that different one. God loves everybody. But God still has a standard. The word, the word still is true. Now let me ease some of y'all brains because some of y'all think I'm talking about homosexuality. No, I ain't talking about that. Only There's a lot of stuff out here that we done ease into and think there's nothing wrong with it. And we said we Christian, we love, and we just, just do it and be around it. And Oh, I ain't doing it. I'm just around it all the time. Yeah, you're the one that's popping them imps and demons back in the church. You're around it all the time. And before you know it, you're going to get a taste for it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we get a taste for it. Then the Bible talks about, as a believer, things are worse on us. Because the enemy coming hard at us. He know he ain't got but a moment. Because as soon as we wake up, we're running back to God. Please, Jesus. So he coming hard at us. Yeah. Hey, anybody tell what I'm talking about? Yeah. He come hard at us. But we're not worried about it because we got a defense against us. God has his grace and his mercy on our lives. But what I'm saying is we got to be a standard. That's all I'm saying. As the body of Christ, we got to be a standard for God. And it's not about us. It's about God. Amen? I don't care if you're the only person in your building, wherever your area of influence is, it's that standard. You got to be there. I don't care who don't like you. I don't care who you can't, who not befriending you. You still got to be that standard. Because at the end of the day, God would exalt you. Amen. And a lot of times, we got friends in our lives that were supposed to be ministry in our lives. Mm-hmm. We fit in and please them. Mm-hmm. We got to have a standard. We, we, we just float with anything. Mm-hmm. We got to have a standard. And I'm not saying sit in and, and, and tear people down. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you be the standard. You be the example that God can use the Holy Ghost. This is what God told me years ago. God said, son, the reason I can't deliver a lot of people is because they, I, there's no standard for me to go by. Mm-hmm. I can't look at so-and-so and say, look at them. They have no standard. And 
we don't give the Holy Spirit a chance to be the Holy Ghost. We want to be the Holy Ghost in people's lives. We want to be right there, rescue people at the wrong time, do for people that what we were supposed to do for them because we got that witchcraft spirit on us. We want everybody to say, I did it for you. Remember I did that? Do you know some things that we go through in life, God don't want nobody doing nothing for us? Because he's trying to get our attention to look to him. And do you know, do you, let me say this, I'm going to let y'all go. Do you understand that something that we experience in life, God already have people already ordained to help, and they are on the way, but we just so uh, microwave want things done immediately. We give the people that God ordained to help us, we don't give them time to help. Because we got witches over our lives that run to our mothers, that run to our rescue. And we should have been let go of the tent. But we got people over our lives that's ruling us. And God came, and that's why we don't know God like we should know him, because we got this one person helping us all the time. When God got people, what God want to bring in people that don't even know you to do something for you. Say, the Lord sent me to you. That does something to your faith. But a lot of our faith has not been rejuvenated, has not been at that level because we got mothers, mothers and demons over our lives. Just ruling us. Oh, I need some food. Here you go. I need some gas. Here you go. You don't even drive a car. How you got gas? But see, there are spirits over us. God want to send somebody that have a gas problem that he want to bless, that just bless them to bless you so somebody else can bless them with gas problems. Mess up the chain. But that's my prayer. God, in these last and evil days, show me what's supposed to be and what's not. I don't want to get involved with what's supposed to be. They're going to be some poor people. Hello. We're going to keep reading this. Amen. Something's supposed to be. And you can't let your heart destroy your life. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody say, examine yourself. Say, I'm doing a spiritual examination of my life to make sure that my spiritual life is lining up with the word of God. Not what somebody taught me, not what I think it's supposed to be, what the word says. That's where I'm at. Now, once I get that, then I can live my life. I got to make sure I'm on track. We can easily get off track. Amen. All right. Stand on your feet. I'm going to stop. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I give you a you've given unto me. One man plants, another water, but he gets the increase. Pour in the oil and the wine. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen.